this video, we are going to look at three different ways to represent the motion of an object. We will look at position time graphs, velocity time graphs, and motion maps. We will start with position time graphs, which we saw in the dune buggy lab. Remember, position is represented with an X. We are going to go through four different examples of position time graphs. The first one is a horizontal line. A horizontal line has a slope of zero. So the position does not change which means the object is not moving, or we can call this at rest. Another way to look at this is if we look at the slope equals zero meters per second, we can say it has a constant velocity of zero meters per second. Our second graph is going to be a little bit more interesting. So we have our position time graph that goes through the origin, but it is not a horizontal line. So the important things to pull out here is we have a positive slope an initial position of zero meters so we can say it's traveling at a constant positive velocity or in other words a constant velocity in the positive direction. This third graph looks similar to our second graph, except it starts at a different position than the origin. So our slope is still a positive slope, but now our initial position is some positive position. But our type of motion is still constant positive velocity or constant velocity in the positive direction. Our final position versus time graph is going down. So that means that we have a negative slope. Notice our initial position is not zero. So we have an initial position of a positive position. But because it's going down, we have a constant negative velocity, or we can say that our, we have a constant velocity traveling towards the negative direction. Now that we've finished our position time graphs, let's look how position time and velocity time graphs are related. In the first graph, remember our object was at rest, which means it has a constant velocity of zero meters per second. On a velocity time graph, that would be represented by a horizontal line on the x-axis. That's because in our position versus time graph, the slope represents velocity. On our velocity versus time graph, the y-intercept represents our velocity. In the second graph, we 
we know it has a constant positive velocity from the position time graph. So I would draw a horizontal line on the positive section of the velocity time graph. If we knew the numerical slope of my position versus time graph, I would plot it at that y-intercept on my velocity time graph. The third graph is going to look very similar to the second graph because on our velocity time graphs, we do not take into account our initial position. We are only taking into account the slope of the position time graph. So I'm going to make a position, our horizontal line, at the velocity, whatever velocity the slope is from the position time graph. Our final position time graph, if you remember, was a negative slope. So it had a constant negative velocity. So if I plot a, on my velocity versus time graph, I'm going to plot a horizontal line on the negative side of my velocity time graph. Again, if we knew the numerical slope of the position time graph, I would plot it at that number on my velocity time graph. The last representation of motion is called a motion map. This is a series of dots and arrows that represent the motion of an object. A dot alone represents that the object is not moving or at rest. A dot with an arrow represents the object is in motion. The direction of the arrow represents the direction that the object is moving. If we had a line here, our motion map, if our line is going that way, that is the positive direction. If our arrow is going the opposite way, that would be the negative direction. The length of the arrow or the distance between consecutive dots also represents how fast you are traveling or the number of the constant velocity. So this arrow compared to this arrow the bottom one would be faster. And if I made a third one, the bottom one would be even faster. So the longer the arrow, the greater the velocity. So let's look at the four position time graphs we drew before and make motion maps for each of them. The first graph, remember, was an object at rest. So the motion map would look like dots on top of each other as we go across. But because the object starts at a positive position, as we see the y-intercept on the position versus time graph, we also need to put it at a positive position on our motion map. So each dot is going to represent one second of time. So this would be my first dot, second dot, third dot, fourth dot, and so on. The second graph was a constant positive velocity starting at the origin. So because it is constant, we will draw arrows that are the same size. We know that the motion map starts at zero because the position time graph starts at the origin. So my motion map would start at the origin a dot with an arrow, dot with an arrow, dot with an arrow, and we want to keep them about the same size because we know that it's constant velocity because it is linear on the position time graph. The third motion map will be similar to the second, but it should start at the positive position that is the y-intercept. So. 
we will start at the positive position, but we will have arrows pointing in the positive direction that are about the same size. The final motion map should start at the positive position that is the y-intercept, and the arrows should be pointing in the opposite direction of the past due because remember, this is a constant negative velocity. So I'll start at my positive position, and I have arrows that are the same size, but this time they're pointing in the negative direction. If you feel like you need more help on motion maps, there is a reading attached to the Unit 1 Constant Velocity tab on the Physics 1 website. We will discuss more about these representations in class later in the unit.